Welcome all, this is Saud. The distributed control system working based on distribution of the control processing around nodes in the system. It is computerized control with large number of control loops which can be executed in the local controllers or at the field by the field bus devices. And this system it has got the ability for remote monitoring and supervision. Let's start explaining the architecture of the computerized control and the disputed control system. We start at high level and as we go through the slides we will go to more detailed explanation. At field level we have the field devices such as pressure, temperature and level sensors feeding the signals through the input output modules and the DCS controllers. The controllers will take the appropriate con control action and feed the output to the final control elements. Number of servers at this level with different functions are connected to the controllers for configuration purpose and diagnostics. The OPC server will pass the data through the network router to the HMI system for remote monitoring. The operator station located at the plant used by the operator to control the process. Here we go to more detailed system architecture. This can be applicable to any DCA system depending on the design. This setup is just to demonstrate the main elements. Some variations should be expected from system to system. The DCS controllers are redundant set, meaning if primary controller fail, the secondary one will just take the control. The redundancy might be applied also to the I.O. levels if required or to have mixed of redundant and single I.O.s depending on the design and requirement. The I.O.s and controllers will get the signals from the field devices. It can be through the conventional 4 to 20 milliamps or through the field bus network. The controllers will be connected to the system network. This network is normally proprietary to the DCS in use. The engineering work workstation will be used to configure the controllers and troubleshooting purpose as well. The DCS controllers mainly used to handle continuous process control with, with many number of PID control loops and, and can be configured with different control al algorithms to, to keep the plant running. The PLC on the other hand, it mainly look after the safeguarding of, of the plant. So, it accepts the analog inputs and the discrete inputs and execute the logic to take the appropriate action to shut down the unit of the process or complete plant at specified uh, unsafe uh, conditions. PLC is running with higher scanning rate comparing to DCS. In fact, in some other design, the PLC can be used to handle both the safeguarding of the plant as well as the continuous control, as it is capable now to run the PID loops as well. The PLC is connected to the DCS through the serial link RS485 or RS232 to exchange the data or through hardwire for more critical uh, 
signals. Uh, the sequence of event PC is connected to the PLC through a dedicated uh, network. The operator workstation are there to control and monitor the plant and they are connected to the system network as well. Uh, the remote clients and uh, HMI at the business uh, network uh, are connected to the system uh, normally uh, through uh, a firewall uh, router and they are getting uh, the data from the OPC server. Here we have some uh, DCS uh, brands uh, example. Uh, this is the Yokogawa Centum uh, DCS. We have here the, the power supply modules, the uh, processor modules, uh, plus the input output modules. Uh, this is the Emerson uh, Delta V DCS. Uh, this is uh, the Foxboro DCS. And, and this the the, the, the annual uh, Experian uh, DCS. Let's talk uh, briefly about uh, the PLC uh, hardware uh, architecture. Uh, it consists of uh, uh, the CPU, uh, real-time uh, clock. It needs uh, some RAM and uh, flash memory or uh, EEPROM. Uh, serial port uh, controller is there for uh, RS-485 uh, uh, and RS-232 uh, uh, connection. The Ethernet controller. Uh, yeah, of course the input-output modules and the parallel bus is there to, to, to connect all the modules uh, together. The extension bus is required if extra IOs to be connected to the system PLC and of course uh, the power supply to power uh, all uh, the, the, the modules. The fault tolerance uh, design in PLC can be achieved by different techniques. This example here used in the Trident uh, uh, PLC by means of uh, triple uh, modular uh, redundant uh, arch architecture. So on each uh, input module we have three in independent uh, legs. Uh, passing the in input and, and data to its uh, respective uh, processor. The, the three main processors, they communicate uh, to each other and, and, and keep on synchronized. They execute the, the, the logic and send the output in independently to the output modules and voting system which is going to give the final uh, output based based on that by by this technique they increase the reliability and the availability of, of the system so if we lose one processor, for example, the other ones uh, will just continu continue to control. Here we have uh, PLC brands uh, examples. Uh, this is the Yokogawa ProSafe uh, RS. We have uh, here the power supply modules, uh, the CPU modules, and the input output uh, modules and this setup normally is uh, applicable to almost uh, all the PLCs. Uh, this is the annual uh, safety manager uh, PLC and here is the Foxboro Trident uh, PLC. 
here we have the Emerson uh, Delta V Cis uh, PFC this is the Allen Bradley control logics uh, PLC uh, this one is the HEMA PLC and this is the Foxboro Triconics uh, PLC finally this is the Siemens uh, PLC there is new development in in this field uh, is in progress currently I would like to give brief about this as you noticed from the previous explanation, we have a number of uh, vendors uh, providing the DCS systems. These systems uh, currently they are customized uh, following uh, different proprietary standards and they are not exchangeable. Uh, plus they cannot be integrated to one platform easily. Uh, all this was the drive to initiate what's called open process uh, automation this concept uh, is is driven by uh, open process automation uh, forum this forum uh, consisting of uh, end users suppliers and uh, system integrators and this idea is to develop open standards in uh, process control uh, so it will be fully interoperable it should be able to interface to existing uh, devices and uh, systems and the new modules will, will follow open standards in, uh, in terms of uh, controllers and applications the control function uh, can be executed uh, at the controller level as well as at the operation uh, platform the network service uh, bus using open source software with plug and play uh, uh, concept that's all uh, thanks for watching and all the best